How to put on a dry suit. Comfort during diving often depends on how thermal jumpsuits and dry suits are put on. Our dry suits are well fitted to the individual diver. This short film demonstrates how to put on thermal jumpsuits and dry suits to get the most out of this equipment. Our basic thermal jumpsuit is the BZ400. Internal suspenders are standard with this model, which keeps the lower part of the jumpsuit in place. The upper part of the jumpsuit can be worn like this when the instructor or diver is waiting for students or the rest of the group. A thermal jumpsuit that fits properly should not restrict movement and should permit movement of the arms and legs in all directions. This model here is the standard large size. Often divers order made-to-measure sizes, but as you can see here, it's not always necessary. About 80% of our customers can wear standard size jumpsuits and dry suits. A properly fitted jumpsuit allows the diver to perform this exercise so that he or she can reach valves in any situation. Now the diver is going to put on the dry suit properly to demonstrate how to choose a dry suit that does not inhibit movement and will allow you to get the best performance from this equipment. In order to put on the dry suit easily, reverse the top part of the suit like this to allow easy access to the lower part of the suit. What's important, this dry suit has flex soles, so the diver must also wear 200 gram thin silate socks, otherwise his or her feet will get cold. Flex soles have ankle cuffs, which have to be open when putting on the dry suit. In order to dive well in a dry suit, it has to fit well, but the diver doesn't necessarily need a lot of extra room which is why the most important aspect of this equipment is to ensure a proper fit. In order to achieve maximum performance from this equipment, the suspenders have to be quite tight. In fact, the diver should be able to feel that the suspenders are holding up the bottom part of the suit. This ensures that the telescoping torso works well. This dry suit is equipped with flex sole shoes that have this protective ankle cuff. It's important that this cuff is closed so air does not accumulate here during dives. The bottom half of the dry suit is put on well and the diver can feel this part of the suit. Now the diver will put on the left arm of the upper part of the dry suit. To make this easier, you can apply talc to the inside of the cuffs. Now the diver is putting on the right sleeve. And then the top part. This dry suit is equipped with a neoprene neck seal. It's really important to grasp the collar so that it is not torn or otherwise damaged when putting the dry suit on. Once this is slipped over the head, then the diver can begin to put on the top part of the suit. With this dry suit, the most important thing is that the telescoping torso is precisely positioned. In a properly fitted dry suit, this cuff will touch the upper part of the pocket. If the telescoping torso is properly positioned, then it works perfectly, and no excess material folds will occur, which means that no excess air will accumulate to affect diver buoyancy. This is one of the most important aspects of putting on this dry suit. Many divers neglect positioning this cuff properly and thus lose the comfort and advantages provided by the telescoping torso. Then the diver fastens the crotch strap. 
The crotch strap is constructed with the loose end facing inwards, so it doesn't get in the way during dives. Only now can the diver zip up the suit. Although the diver can do this alone, I always suggest that someone helps out with zipping up the first part of the closure, because this is the only place where the zipper can be damaged. Often divers pull at the zipper in this place and damage the teeth, so it's a good idea to have some help. Now the diver is zipping up the dry suit. This is a covered, protected plastic zipper. It's important to place the tape of the waterproof metal zipper to the inside and then zip up the plastic zipper. As I mentioned before, this dry suit has a neoprene neck seal which must be folded under about 3 to 4 centimeters. It also has to rise up fairly high, so when the diver is moving back and forth, there are no gaps that could let in water. The diver will now do the same exercise as before to demonstrate how well the dry suit performs when it's put on properly. I zrób to samo ćwiczenie jeszcze raz, pokazując jak inaczej skafander pracuje, jak jest dobrze ułożony. Skafander jest wyposażony. This dry suit is equipped with inlet and outlet valves. These are placed optimally, so the diver can evacuate air during diving while holding his or her arms in this position. A properly fitted dry suit is one that allows the diver to reach the bottom of the pockets without having to bend his or her body, and one that allows complete freedom of movement. Great, thanks. Although taking the dry suit off is not as important as putting it on, the most convenient way to do it is to start by unfastening the crotch strap so the upper section can be removed easily over the head. Then unzip the protective zipper over the waterproof zipper. Then unzip the waterproof zipper. This allows in some air which makes it all a lot easier. It's essential that when the diver is guiding the collar over the head that he or she doesn't damage it with his or her fingernails or tug at it uncontrollably. Start with the right sleeve. and then the left. Here I'd like to demonstrate that these elastics, which help to put on the dry suit, can also sometimes help the diver to put on dry gloves so that air flows into the dry glove and the diver's hand is not crushed by pressure. After diving, storing and transporting the dry suit is also important. If the dry suit has a neoprene neck seal, it's really important to turn it inside out during storage and transport. When the dry suit is hung on a hanger, this prevents damage to the face of the material that creates the seal around the diver's neck during diving. It's also very important that the zipper is half closed so that the dry suit is not damaged or torn here when hanging. Sprinkle talc in the wrist seal before storing the dry suit. The best way to fold the dry suit for transport is to have the back on the inside and the zipper on the outside. As I mentioned previously, the zipper should be closed halfway. Fold up the lower part of the dry suit like this. I 
A dry suit folded like this, with a zipper closed halfway, should not sustain damage during transport or long-term storage.